To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Um, I want to appreciate Pastor Jacob Akali for allowing me his pulpit for 21 days. May God bless you. It takes a good friend to offer such kindness. May God bless you. I would also want to thank you so much for at least wearing a robe today so that I am not the only minister in a robe. Let me tell you a little bit about robes. Robes are biblical, but it's not very common in our setting. I read some text recently that made me aware that God instructed skillful tailors and seamstresses to make beautiful robes for Aaron that it may bring glory unto him and that glory will uplift the image of God and also set him aside. If you look at um, Pastor Akali's robe and mine, these are not things that under the circumstances married men like us would want to wear. But the secret of a robe is that it humbles you. If I were to wear a robe, I mean a suit, to preach to such an elite congregation, I must wear a suit that probably should be worth 12000 in order to match your class. I mean, for starters, if you look at engineer Maxwell's robe, I mean, this could be about 36000 I know. And the pastor must not compete his members. And so I've got two robes. The other one had a cross, which my members here complained about. I have instructed the deaconet to remove the crosses which they have removed. Um, someone also complained about the color, purple. Um, well, in the TV it may appear purple, but even if it's purple, I am not a Jesuit. I am a servant of the Most High God. I will investigate the colors very well. And should the color conflict with our doctrine, I want to promise you, it's a very expensive robe which I receive as a gift, but I will discard it if it conflicts with our doctrine. But when you wear this one, which makes you look like an angel, it reminds you that you are a servant to the Lord. May the Lord bless you. I want to appreciate the congregation and I want to congratulate my dear ones um, who have received Christ and will be baptized today. You will excuse me. I am going to visit someone and come back. Wait, Kidogo. It's, it's nice to be a pastor. Your congregation will wait patiently for you till you come and they'll be wondering what is this man about? The king is coming for me. The king is coming for me. Now I want you to know that I mean me, the king, is coming for me. He's coming because he promised he will come. And he's a man 
who does not break promises and he is coming for me. He is coming because he must prove that he's got a better place for us. The king is coming for me. But one of the most beautiful things that I look forward to is that he says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his words. The king is coming for me. I have made friends. I have made families. And in almost every country that I visit, I make friends eternally. So I want to tell all of you that you are my friends. In fact, you are my family. Hallelujah. Now when Jesus comes, according to his promise, he will give us rewards. And I want to imagine the crown of eternity placed on me. Paulus, as someone said yesterday, you know, my name has different shades. Paulus, Paulus, Paul, I agree and accept all of them. Probably Jesus says, Paulus, I say, yes, my king. And he says, you messed up, but you made it. Kuja apa, this is your crown. And you know what I will do? I will pick the crown from my head and lay it at his feet and tell him that I was disqualified but your grace made it possible. This crown you gave me, it's yours. Hallelujah. A family wanted to appreciate me and so gave me roses. 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 So, it's been by my bedside and I've been watching it carefully. I turn off the light and on again. Then I look at the roses. There was a beautiful note attached to it. I read it several and several and several. Then I will pray for the family and pray for all of you. Because of this is from all of you. I was thinking to take this to my wife when she meets me at the airport. And I'm a very crazy man. I can pay for excess luggage just to take this to my baby. Oh, sorry, sorry, not my baby, to my mommy. I am his baby, I mean, I am her baby. She is my mama. So in our house, it's a mama-baby thing. And I'm glad I'll be flying tomorrow in the morning and see my mama. If you know what that means, say amen. amen. Don't cheat yourself. Appreciate your wife. I mean a whole human being given to you forever and ever. Pastor Kali, there is nothing better as that one. Yeah. You know, we are pastors. When we get home, the shepherdess takes care of us. She prays for us. May God bless you, Mama, wherever you are. Amen. Mama Pauline. Now, I was thinking about the crowns that Jesus will give us. A talking of appreciation. A talking to say, well done. And I said to myself this morning, when I, while I, after praying for all these candidates and said that probably I should let them know that Christ will one day give them a token in appreciation for their faith. And so, Pastor Akali, you will permit me that I will unloose this beautiful bouquet and I would want each candidate to receive a, I mean, to receive a rose from me. 
What do you say to that church? Amen. I think they deserve it. Yeah, uh, probably a deaconess can come and help me. This is why you need the mamas around you. Yeah. My dear friends, you are blessed. Amen. If Jesus were here today, he would have given you something, a token. And while you wait for him, I want to give you roses. Hallelujah. I want to give you roses. In appreciation to your faith that you have expressed in the Lord. Hallelujah. The whole thing has been well packaged. Fresh. This one. Imported. It's Kenyan, eh? Kenyan made. Imported from Eldoret. <laughs> wow. Jesus hasn't come yet because he's taking his time to package your crowns. Ah, Pastor, you have done well. Now, let's, yeah, you have done well. I think we are getting old that we even don't know how to handle roses. Yes, please come. 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 And this is how Jesus will call us one by one, handing over to us the crown of eternity. Congratulations. 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 Well done. 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 Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. 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 Sorry. Well done. Well done. And God will also tell the pastor, Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. Well done. And Jesus might be having in his hands left over crowns. Left over crowns. It may be too late on that day. But today, I want to offer you an opportunity. You are not yet baptized, but you want to come for a rose in accepting baptism that one day Christ may give you the crown of glory. Would you be bold enough to just show by the raise of your hand? Mm. 
well done well done please join them that's okay well done would you want to say yes to Jesus this morning would you want to say Jesus I accept you and I want to join this church well done well done well done please just come please just come well done would you want to say Jesus I appreciate everything that you have done for me you died for me and so I accept this rose in preparation for the crown of eternity do I have somebody here who wants to say dear Lord well done well done well done well done you must be brave this is not for cowards it is a decision that can only be made by those who will be moved by the Holy Spirit unless the Spirit of God moves you you cannot make this decision it is a difficult decision yes I know but if you can make this decision you know yes you can make it early in life while you wait for preparation well done well done do I have somebody there saying pastor I do not want Jesus to have left over roses just walk to me I want to pray for them and I want to pray for you too well done well done well done well done Jesus as you wait well done well done you are not yet baptized and the Spirit of God has been speaking to your heart make that decision take that step today it may be too late tomorrow now that there is still time you can make it and the Lord will say unto you on that day well done well done I want to kindly invite the man of God to come and pray for these people the pastor can come and pray for these people may God bless you well done in honor of what God has done bringing into his kingdom precious souls shall we all rise and join the man of God as he prays for them our most gracious and loving father in heaven We sincerely, Lord, thank you for your marvelous grace. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your manservant, Pastor Paulos, for making it, Lord, clear unto us that indeed you, the King, is coming. And when, Lord, you, when you come, you want to crown each and every one of us. But I tell you that, Lord, your man has just given a rose flower. As we wait for your soon return, that, Lord, you may crown us. Bless him, Lord, as he speaks to us this day. Increase in him, our Lord, our Savior. May we hear you one more time speaking to us in the stillness of your voice. We also, Lord, want to thank you for 
our brothers and sisters whom today have accepted you Lord to test the waters of baptism yeah. before Lord they test the waters baptize them Lord with the Holy Spirit Amen. may we see you Lord keep them safe until you come oh Father in heaven we pray for each and every person that has made it today may you meet all of us at our points of need one more time Lord speak to us yes. it's our prayer in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Number two, six, two. <laughs> find the love of God being expressed to us again in a promise. In chapter 13 of this gospel according to Saint John Jesus is actually given one of his profound closing remarks. And he was preparing his disciples for what was ahead of him. He was about to die. But he told them that I 
will believe in you. Peter, who had all along believed that Jesus would be setting up a physical kingdom, questioned Jesus and asked him, where are you going, master? And Jesus said, where I am going now, you cannot come with me. You cannot come with me. But let me take the lead. Now Jesus also indicated in chapter 13 that he will be arrested and crucified. And Peter said, Master, wherever you go, I will go with you. I will no longer commit the sins that I commit after Sabbath, after each Sabbath. I will not be a thief at my workplace. I will not be an abusive husband. I will be a submissive wife. Peter promised Jesus on your behalf. Peter said, Lord, wherever you go, I will go with you. Even death, I will face death with you. Jesus told Peter in a very friendly way, Oja Kidogo, Koja, wait, wait, wait a little bit. Be patient, boy. Be patient. I can read your heart. In fact, your mind is seen by me. You are saying something, but your heart is saying different things. I know what your thoughts are, Peter. Wait a little bit. In fact, before the cock cries, you will deny me three times that you are not my disciple. You have denied Jesus three times, many times. Now it was based on this encounter that happened between Jesus and Peter. Actually, this revelation of who Peter really was after this had been, you know, I mean, revealed unto him, Peter was crushed down. Just as during these weeks and days, after you have heard the good news, undiluted truth, you see yourself as the vilest, the hope, I mean, the hopeless of all sinners, Peter saw himself there. And so he wrote himself off from the kingdom of heaven. So Peter was troubled. That now that the master has known my heart, that I am unfaithful, I am not Peter. What is the meaning of Nimetosha? I am what? done. Enough. I am finished. What do I say? Nimekwisha. Ah. Peter spoke Kiswahili and Kalenjin. Nimekwisha Tugul. I am done completely. I am completely finished. Just as many of you think this morning that you are completely finished. And Peter said to himself, right in his heart, now I am condemned forever. But listen to what only a friend like Jesus can disclose. John chapter 14, just the next chapter, listen to the words of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Peter, I can see that your sins are troubling you. The revelation I have made about you is troubling you. But Peter, there is a future. Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me, believe also in God. Actually, to your surprise, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now, Peter, you are a sinner, but my grace is sufficient. 
Therefore, I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come back when that is done and receive you unto myself. Actually, you are distancing yourself away from me. That I have come that I may draw you closer unto myself. Christ is here, not as your enemy, but as your friend. And there is no friend like Jesus, I can guarantee you. Jesus will offer you more than a piece of chocolate. For I have heard that some men offered just a bar or a piece of chocolate and after that broke the virginities of some saints. I have heard that some others just offered job for a meager salary and destroyed that married woman's life. But Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You have sinned. You have messed up. But see, I can see beyond your mess. I can see beyond your mess. And I see nothing but grace. And so let not your heart be troubled. The king is coming for you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Why? That where I am, you may also be there. We are kings and queens in the making because of the blood of Jesus. Do not see yourself beneath where Christ has placed you. You are priceless and nothing can take your place in the heart of God. He's got crowns that will be mounted on your head. You are going to walk on streets of gold. You will live with Jesus in heaven for a thousand years. When he has recreated this earth and sin and sinners are no more. Jesus will bring you back here. And my Bible tells me that he will be our God right on this earth. We will be together with God. And the former order of things shall be no more. No man will promise you and disappoint you. Some men and women are just passengers in relationship. When they see you, they see a boda boda rider. When they get to a point, they say, Yes, I want to come down here. Bye bye. May the Lord rebuke all spiritual boda boda operators. Amen. Be faithful till the end. And crowns are there. Beloved, I make a new revelation to you. Whether you like it or not, the many mansions include your name. Whether you go and occupy it or not, the mansions are there. Jesus does not want to be accused. That you see, you brought only 144,000 of us. For those who think that the saved ones will only be 144,000. So nobody will accuse God that you brought only these few people because you couldn't build for them. Jesus is the master estate builder. He's got a place for you. Not a flat, but a mansion. And your name is inscribed already on it. What is your name, ma'am? Priska, Priska, surnamed, redeemed by grace. What is your name? Donna. I have even scattered your name. Come again. Donna. Ah, you have a beautiful name. So your name will have the mansion Donna 
highly favored. Brother, what is your name? Morris. Morris, the most pursued by Christ. Amen. We shall all have names. And the names are already written against our mansions. You are here mourning over meager things. There is a place for you. Amen. Some of you, it's getting to the end of the month. And you are having sleepless nights. Where is the rent coming from? Well, soon and very soon, you will be an eternal landlord. You will live and live and live and live without paying anything because your Redeemer, your friend, Jesus Christ, paid it all. He paid it. He paid for the crown. And he paid for the mansion. He paid for the street of gold. He paid for your life. Amen. Your life. He paid for it. And I can see him coming. Listen. When Jesus Christ had the last supper, the Holy Communion, the last supper with his disciples, he made a promise to them. That after this one, I will no longer drink this. I will no longer eat it until it is made new in my father's kingdom. For 2,023 years, Jesus steps onto the step, I mean, to the gate every morning and sits down, waiting and asking the angels, are they coming? For 2,023 years, he has been desiring to dine with you again. Amen. Just when all the saints are ready to go to heaven, one person messes the whole show. And Jesus tells his disciples, one of you will betray me. Even Judas had the gut to ask, Lord, am I the one? Is it me? You know yourself, but don't mess up completely. Enough of the mess. Judas had an opportunity just like you. He had an opportunity just like Peter. Peter messed three times, but he went, hid himself, and said, Lord, Lord, oh, oh Lord, please have mercy on me. I am sorry. I have done it again. I told you I will not drink again. I have drunk. I will not smoke. I have smoked. I will not masturbate. I have masturbated. I will not lie. I have lied. I will not do ABCD. I will not steal. I have stolen. Lord, please, I have betrayed you three times. But have mercy on me. Jesus, knowing the heart of Petru, said, Behold, I am going to prepare a place for you. And he says, Peter, you can count on my words. If in heaven there are no mansions, I would have told you. Another revelation. Jesus did not go and they then organized groundbreaking ceremony. Somebody did not hear me. Before Jesus Christ came on earth, the mansions were there. He was just going to inspect and say, this is for Rosalind. Yeah. What is your name? This is for Tebis. You've got nice, powerful, difficult names sometimes. This is for Tebis. And yes, yes, okay. Now, no, Father, we are not going to be selective here. These mansions are for the saints. And we are expecting all of them to come. And they will come. No, they are not going to come, Father. They are going to come. I know they will 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 come. So when God wants to say, enough is enough, Jesus says, Baba, wait, Kidogo. Kidogo too. Kidogo. Now he's been saying Kidogo for a long time. But you see, a day is coming when he shall say, 
I have waited enough. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is unholy, let him remain. It is finished. And I see him coming. Why must he come? Because too many, too many women are suffering. Why must he come? Because too many men are suffering. Marriages are scattering. Children are being raped. Homosexuality is on the rise. Everything on this earth is a mess. And if care is not taken, if Jesus does not interrupt, no men or women in our generation will be saved. If some pastors can boldly come out and declare that they are bisexual and accept the church to accept them, breastfeed them, babysit them, and nurture them so that the church will become Sodom and Gomorrah, then you understand why Christ must come. There must be an interruption. There must be an interruption. This cannot be forever. There must be an interruption. And he says, Behold, I am coming shortly. And he is coming. Oh, I remember the Bible says he came as a babe and he was born in a manger. And it was only a few people that went there to visit Jesus and he came as a feeble baby. The Bible says this time round, it's not an affair of Mary and Joseph. He's coming in the clouds. And it's not going to be an affair where some people will be looking for him. It is going to be loud. It will be glamorous. It will be beautiful. Everybody, all eyes shall see him. Even those who pierced him. He is coming. He is not coming as a babe. He is not coming as a lamb. He is coming as the lion of Judah. The king of kings. The judge of the world. In fact, the Lord of lords. He is my king and he is coming. He is coming. Some church members were arrested. And taken to the police station. When they were taken. They were told to call. A relative. To come and sign their bail. The only trusted man they knew. Was their pastor. So they called me. Being a pastor is very difficult. You have to visit the mortuary. You have to visit the prison. You have to visit the police cells. Sometimes, a church member who wants to punish you may say, police officer, prosecutor, kindly tell the pastor to come inside here. I am ashamed to come out. So now you also taste how it feels to be in police cells. You don't like it, but your member is there. Just like Jesus Christ did not like planet Earth because of the things that were happening here, but because of love, he moved from heaven. He left his glory just for you and I. So I entered, but before I entered, I heard them say, ah, my pastor is here, my pastor is here. He is coming for me. My pastor is coming for me. He is coming for me. And surely, I went in, heard the story, and I said, this one, I can sign a bond for it. No problem. Let's go. Jesus is coming for you. The king is coming for you. But he says, I should tell you that in this last days, the earliest times will come. Men will become lovers of money more than lovers of church members. They will become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Men will become wicked. And because of this wickedness, if you do not take care, your love will grow cold. He said, I shall tell you 
that in these last days it is possible that you may be sleeping and so I should warn you that sleep not as do others. Be watchful and pray. Thank you. Let not your heart be troubled. So when you cannot pay the rent at the end of this month and you hear that knock, landladies especially have a unique way of knocking. Yeah, those uh, who have experienced that now are saying, yeah, pastor, we know, we can identify. When they knock, it's not a joke. Baba Mutenta, are you inside? I have come. Then you started thinking, started thinking and praying unto the Lord. When they come this month end, tell them that you have a mansion in heaven and it is just a matter of time. You will occupy that mansion. Hallelujah. As you give them the money, let it be in your mind that this one could be the last time that I pay rent on earth. Because soon and very soon, yours, the mansion is coming. You are a landlady in the making. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus knows you very well. And the Bible says there will be surprises in heaven because of the glory of what you are about to you know, see in heaven. And a friend of mine says there will be three surprises. Surprise number one. That some of the people, great preachers, great singers, great this and that, that you expected to see in heaven may not be there. And you will ask, where are they? Have you seen him? Have you seen Kwame? Have you seen Kojo? Where are they? Where are they? And the books will be opened and you will just shut your mouth. Really? So they did all these things. I thought they were saints. May God cause it to happen that none of us here may miss the opportunity. Amen. Surprise number two. Some of the people like Bob Marley and Peter Touch that you had written off one of Jabless and Michael Jackson maybe that you thought may not be there. You may be surprised that Michael Jackson is in heaven and you will ask somebody, is that Mike? Is that Mike? I thought he will not be here. Whether Mike will be there or not, it's not your cup of tea. Concentrate on your situation. Concentrate on yourself. Many believers are now becoming judges and critics. They mark everything. They watch everything. They become holier than thou. And yet, in themselves, they are at filth, as filthy at filth, as filthy rags. Jesus says, this is the time. So surprise number two. You will meet people in heaven that you had written off. This one will not be in heaven. In fact... That boyfriend who made you never to give birth because he raped you, you might be surprised, confess the sins according to 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 and are now in heaven. So stop feeling bitter and petty. Move on with your life and become a more committed Christian. Surprise number three. As you walk in the streets of gold, with your brother Maxwell, then the reflection of the streets of gold that is like a mirror. You see yourself inside and you remember some of the things that you have done. You will only look at the mirror, see yourself there, and you will doubt. You will doubt. It will surprise you that of all the things that you have done, you did everything possible to get you out of heaven. But the love of Jesus was too much. 
The love of Jesus is too much. When the devil kicks you into the goalpost, Jesus Christ touches you. When the devil knocks you down, Jesus picks you up. When you have messed, his grace is enough to wash you again. And when you run away from him, like some of you are thinking to do, Jesus says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins are so filthy, I will make them as clean as my righteousness. So the surprise number three is yourself. Am I the one? The opportunity is there. And you can make use of it now. That Jesus sounds a warning to the people that in the end time, some will not be ready. Will you be ready when the king comes for you. I have been here for 21 days and we have preached 25 sermons. I am but an empty vessel that I believe Christ spoke to all of us. Is there someone here this morning or afternoon who wants to say, Lord, I want to dedicate my life to God. I want to live a new life from today. If you don't mean it, please do not respond to this call. I am not calling for everybody. And don't be ashamed that if you truly mean it, that you want to rededicate your life to Christ, that when he comes in his glory, you will have a crown of eternity. Please stand with me. Let me pray for you. As we sing... I've wandered far away from home. Now I am coming home. As we sing it softly. If you are here and you are not baptized, or one way or the other, you have divorced Christ. And you want to commit your life to him. Through water baptism, following the example of Jesus, I still have roses that I want to hand over to you. Is there anyone in this auditorium today or anyone online with us who wants to say, Lord, I now accept you as my Lord and personal Savior and I want to be baptized? Let me just show you let me just see you by the raise of your hand. Just show your hand. May God bless you. May God bless you. You want to say, Lord, I am coming home. Just come to me up here. I want to have a word with you. God bless you. What's the name? The okay. Still long I'm strong. Now I am coming. Now I want to make a general appeal to all of you. Coming home. Lord, I'm coming. Oh yeah. Never more. Just open, open, open wide the hands of love. Lord, Lord, come in. Are you in the congregation and you want to say, Pastor, 
I need a special prayer from you. I just want to be rededicated to God. And I am not ashamed to come out of the congregation to stand in front of them and to say, Lord, I rededicate my life to you. From today onwards, I want to be a better Christian. If that is your heart desire, please move and come forward to the side. I'm waiting for you. Lord, I have. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. Open. Open. What? You want to rededicate your life to Christ. Not necessarily to be baptized. But you just want to rededicate your life to Christ. And to say from today, I am a new child of yours. Welcome. 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 You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Come. The doors are opened. And Christ is waiting for you. He is calling you. My son, my daughter, supper is ready. Come home. I've wasted many years. But now I come home. Welcome, man. God bless you. God bless you. Crowns are waiting for you. Crowns are waiting for you. Mansions are waiting for you. You just want to say, I rededicate myself to you, dear Lord. Days are filled. Burdens are lifted. Just come. If you feel strongly that the Holy Spirit is speaking directly to you, that rededicate yourself to Christ today. The doors are opened. Make the way clear. Let nothing prevent you from tapping into the grace. May God bless you. Come, rededicate yourself to Christ. John the Baptist was in the water. And he called for repentance and that come repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand is the Holy Spirit speaking to you I do not care who you are I do not care where you have been what I care for is your life and I want to say it this afternoon that Jesus is inviting you to me all you who are weary and heavy laden may God bless you and so days are filled with sorrow and care Hearts are lonely and dreary. Burdens are lifted at cover. Are you coming? We are waiting for you. Jesus is Jesus can take over that burden. Jesus can take over that burden. He is here for you. He is here for you and he can take the burden away. What is it that has been pressing you down? Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Trouble souls the Savior can see. Yet Savior can see every heart ache. And free heart and burdens are lit 
cannot come. Jesus, 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 may God bless you. There is somebody here. There is somebody here. There is somebody here. Somebody in this congregation that the Lord is waiting for. And in a while, I will ask the man of God, Pastor Kali, to pray for us. But I want you to come. Jesus is May God bless you. May God bless you. Our eyes are closed. Pastor Kali will pray and commit these saints into the hands of God. And even those who may decide right now to commit themselves, recommit themselves to God through baptism, the water is here, the ordained minister is here, and Christ is here to officiate their wedding. May God bless you. Loving Father, loving Father in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise your name for the blessings of this day. We praise your name, Lord, for giving us the grace to pass by your house yes. today. We praise your name for treating us to thy word that keeps on revealing to us your great love towards us. We, uh, we stand here with gratitude to know that, Lord, you've gone to prepare a place for us. A place for each one and every one of us. We are delighted, dear Lord, to know that there is a mansion for us in heaven. Yes. Whether we will go or we will not go, there is a mansion for us. May your name be praised. Amen. Father, we thank you. You've prepared for us mansions because you love us so much. Yes. And you will not want any one of us to miss that which you have prepared for us. Yes. Everlasting life. We live this life that is temporal. We live this life that is full of troubles yes. and issues. We are grateful that you prepared for us a life without troubles, life without end, life that knows no death, life that knows no diseases. We are grateful and we honor you. Yes. Thank you for your love. Yes. We praise your name for your daughters and your sons. Dear Lord, whom you have touched in the three weeks that we have been having these meetings as you've continued to reveal yourself for us. And today they will be baptized as a symbol of the transaction that has happened in their lives. They are surrendered to your Lordship. They are welcoming you into their lives as their Lord and Savior. Yes. We praise your name, Lord, for giving them the courage to surrender their lives to you. Yes. And we praise your name, Lord, for your daughters and your sons who stand in front to rededicate their lives to yes. you. Dear Lord, thank you also thank you. for moving in their lives yes. and causing conviction to happen in their hearts yes, Lord. to see the need to rededicate themselves. Yes, Lord. Receive them unto yourself yes. and may you grant them the new lease of life to yes. walk in you, to walk for you, to live for you yes. the rest of their lives. Yes. Father, we also celebrate the many of us who gave our lives to you before. Yes. And even though we have not come here, we one more time give our lives to you. Yes. For to be yours, we want to be. Because if we are not yours, whose else shall we be? We give ourselves to you. Yes. Keep us in you the rest of our lives. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for your man servant, Pastor Mautu. And the very special way you have used him and continue to use him. Bless him. And now, Lord, bless these, your sons and daughters. And bless those who are coming for baptism. May your name be praised and be honored even as we witness their baptism. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May you be seated. We shall be singing number 598. As we sing, let me see if I can give you roses. How many of you want the roses? You want it? May God bless you. If you want a rose, yes. Number five, yes. God bless you. God bless you. Rise up. God bless you. 